Hello, my name is Dara Costa, and today I will be showing you a couple of my photographs. As you will soon see, the inspiration behind my work is black and white film photography. Although I am a fan of color, there is a specific attention to detail and subject that comes with black and white photography, which is what I love. The rest is for the viewer's interpretation and imagination. Each piece that you will see was not planned. They were taken in the moment with an iPhone 7 Plus. Whether it was outside for a walk or indoors with a couple of friends, I believe that any moment is a great moment to capture a beautiful image. Enjoy. Inhale is a very tranquil and refreshing photograph. As the model's face is lifted up to the sky to take a deep breath, she welcomes the sun onto her face. This creates a beautiful highlight onto her forehead, nose, eyes, cheek, lips, and chin. The light beam from the sun is almost parallel with her neck, almost creating perfect symmetry. Love of a Daughter captures a genuine moment of a mother and daughter enjoying a funny moment together. Laughter and happiness are two of many emotions people always strive to achieve, and you can truly feel the love and joy that they're experiencing just by looking at the daughter's face located on the left, and although the mother on the right is facing away from the lens, there's just enough of her face in the frame to see the crinkles by her eyes as she's smiling. What is special about In Bloom is the detail in the leaves in the foreground. You can see the veins stretching across from the stem out to the end of the leaf. But as you look more, you'll notice the woman emerging in the background. You can see that she is surrounded by nature as the shadows of the leaves engulf her. For Midday Dream, I wanted the photograph to be more of a studio high fashion image. This was not taken straight on, but at a lower angle to the model's right side. Her chin is lifted as she looks off to the side, allowing you to see the full length of her turtleneck. This can guide you in envisioning how elongated her neck is. A nice contrast to the image is the shadow from the blinds as the sun is shining in through the window and onto the model as well as the wall behind her. Runaway was taken at night, and like the previous image, I was going for a studio fashion photograph, but in this case, a bit more relaxed. As you can see, the model's neck is elongated as she tilts her head softly back. You can notice the shadows and highlights in her hair, separating it from the background as well as where her hands are laid on top of the railing. It's almost as if the metal is illuminated by the reflection of the flash. Last but certainly not least, this is two of a kind. This is the only photograph that wasn't taken on an iPhone 7 Plus. I took this on an iPhone 8 Plus using the portrait mode feature and studio lighting effect. This is all that was used to create this outcome. It was my only photograph in which I have not added a black and white filter, nor any edits such as brightness, sharpness, contrast, highlights, shadows, and so on. Hi, my name is Leslie Delgado and these are some of my artworks. Wonderland. This art piece I made on Adobe Illustrator and it was featured in the St. Peter's University Parvalm along with a poem called Trapped by Omega Vasquez. I wanted to express the feeling of being in a dream, which is why I added the clouds in the background, on, along with the head being the main character living in his own dream. 
I chose these specific colors to give the vibe of a fantasy wonderland, and I really like how it all came out. Cliff. This photograph I took was on top of a tall cliff when I went on a trip to Ecuador. While I was looking around at the view, I decided to take a photograph on my iPhone 8 Plus and I wanted to capture the moment. You'll see the ocean as well as the view as when you look down. I was also able to capture the waves in the bottom land of the beautiful place called San Lorenzo in Ecuador. I was very happy of, of how the photographs turned out after I edited it in Photoshop. Desert Menu This piece I made in Adobe InDesign. It is a folding menu and it's 11 by 12. I made this venue for the intention of the restaurant called Sweet Tooth, which sells both sweets and desserts. I followed kind of a vintage theme for the illustration, which I did in Illustrator, and followed a pink and blue theme to match the restaurant's concept well. I felt like the illustration went very well with the menu, despite being different styles and colors. Buildings One day, I was walking by downtown New York, and I decided to capture one of these buildings from the view up. It was a very nice sunny day when I took this photograph, but while I was editing it out the picture, I decided to go for black and white. represents how I was feeling during the start of lockdown. I usually paint myself portraits in blue with different variations of that color um, to highlight how I'm feeling, to capture the emotion that I'm feeling in the moment. So I'm feeling very low, I paint myself blue, because I'm feeling weak and out of it and just sick and etc. The painting was made with acrylic paint on a pre-made ready primed canvas. This painting is very similar to the last painting. I painted them both pretty much at the same time. The first one is called Alone, as this one is called Alone Part 2. Um, it's pretty much a continuation of the first picture. Um, again, I paint myself blue to capture how I'm feeling during the entire lockdown process and uh, fear-mongering and all of that, all of that fear. The painting was made with acrylic paint on a pre-made, primed, ready canvas. This painting is called Numb. Um, it was made to feel chaos, but um, internal chaos, uh, the teeth are words that say I can't feel anything, uh, with pink eyes to show, um, the exhaustion, um, and the background is basically like anxious feeling chaotic feeling inside yourself in different variations of pink the painting overall is made with acrylic paint and acrylic paint markers on a already primed ready-made canvas this painting is called alone point two um, 20, 2020, um, it was made also dur during the time of lockdown, I believe, um, but at a different stage, 
uh, this one's a little bit more simple, a little bit more, uh, modern. Um, I wanted to add texture, so I added a message to linen cloth, and then I hot glued that cloth to the canvas after I already had the figure painted and the background painted. The painting is made with acrylic paint, acrylic paint markers, embroidery cloth, and string. This photograph is called Moonlight. Um, this was inspired by the movie Moonlight as a lot of my other works are inspired by that movie. Um, I just wanted to highlight vulnerability in, uh, men, especially a, uh, cisgender man. So, I took a picture where the, with a strong contrast, and edited the hues and saturation to exaggerate the light, the... The color and the light and this is how it turned out it was shot on 35 millimeter and edited on Photoshop this piece was a compilation of photos made up of personal photos and photos taken by other people that I resized, cut out, and put together for a mock-up cover for the Pavan. This photo started off as a photo of a man taking a picture of the mountains in Colorado. Uh, the picture started off really gloomy and dusty and he had a huge shadow casted over him and I wanted this photo to look more lifelike so I played around with the sky, um, erased the dust, played around with the saturation and the shadows and was satisfied with how this turned out. Spilling Teacup. I am fascinated by Alice in Wonderland and I love the story that has an elegant and creepy environment. I love dark fantasies and I wanted to create an artwork that has a dark fantastic feeling I love so much. This painting is obviously a little inspired by the Mad Hatter chapter in Alice in Wonderland with a similar bizarre images like the sugar spider cubes. This painting is on 11 by 14 inch canvas created on January 27th, 2021. The Crying Hidden Figure. Tears help me express myself through stress, anger, sadness, and happiness. Now these days, I am not afraid to cry. And I feel like my tears make me a stronger woman. But once I was shy about expressing myself freely. This painting shows a figure hiding inside a tree crying in fear from the outside world. I always wanted to create a painting to express my tears and my emotions. This painting is on 10 by 8 inch canvas created on June 5th, 
2020. Melting Eye of Light. Seeing a person's emotions through their eyes can light up the darkest times. Eyes are a window into a person's soul. They can shine a light into the darkest corners of a person's being like a candle up at night. This painting is on an 18 by 24 inch canvas created on July 8th, 2020. Beyond death, there is life. When humans and creatures pass on to the other world, a new life is created in the great circle of life. Life is like a cycle. This artwork has a lot of darker details due to my other previous artworks, which you can tell due to the dark colors I used and the lack of cuteness. But however, there is brightness into a new life rising next to the dead animal skull as representing as a blooming flower. This painting is on 10 by 8 inches canvas, created on December 10th, 2019. Cinderella After Midnight. This painting is my own twist on the fairy tale where Cinderella finally gets to escape the limits of her society and is able to enjoy the wonders of the magical world outside without a prince. Cinderella here looks like a doll because I love dolls and I believe that dolls represent happiness, peace, and innocence. The canvas size is 18 by 24 and was created on October 1st, 2019. Madeline. Madeline is a fictional character of my own creation. When I was creating her, I was inspired by the artworks of Tim Burton and Mark Ryder. I wanted to combine the creepy cute look of Mark Ryder's artworks as well as his themes of big eyes with the creativity of monstrous ideas usually seen in Tim Burton's stories and films Madeline here is seen underwater because she is the daughter of the fishman and mermaid. What I love the most about this painting is her details and her tentacles. This painting is on 23 by 18 inch canvas created on March 10th, 2021. A Heart of an Artist. I believe that all of our hearts come in different shapes and sizes. I wanted to paint what I believe my heart will look like. Of course, as an artist, my heart will look like in a weird shape. No one has ever seen before. I wanted to paint my heart inside a glass bowl because people can notice my personality and my learning disability by looking at me. The glass is sensitive, like I am, as an artist. I put a weird wired flower on top of my heart to represent the creativity blooming into life for the love of my art. There is a tear of blue blood falling out of the heart to represent how ours are. I am different in many ways. I was inspired by the Spanish artist Frida Carlos and some of her paintings. For example, the two Fridas. This painting is on an 11 by 14 inch canvas created on August 1st, 2020. This piece talks about Black Lives Matter protests that have been going on this past year. I was enticed to make a powerful message for those who don't understand the reasons for these protests. This is a striking yet powerful image and although this does not end racism for black people, it can teach others what life can look like for them everywhere. Many children are being held in boarding detention centers for long periods of time while they are separated from their loved ones. I wanted to show how young these children could be and how lonely they are. I was inspired by Loteria, which is a Mexican game mostly used to teach young kids and this gives a nod to the Mexican culture. Another piece of my collection was this photo that was taken in the boardwalk. It amazes me how clever these protesters can be. She carried flowers with the names of black people who had been killed from police officials. And it saddened me how this happened, but silence is also a killer. 
Therefore, I found this as a heartfelt message to commemorate the lost beautiful souls. I captured this photo in the boardwalk during my Black Lives Matter protest. I was drawn to this poster because the meaning of it is powerful. Tu lucha es mi lucha is a common saying, your fight is our fight. This shows how diverse this protest has united our cultures. No matter what race you are, we all strive for the same thing, freedom. Discrimination of Asian Americans and how there are many who are blamed for the virus since the pandemic started. And in doing so, they have faced racial profiling and have experienced violent altercations for that. Nobody should be treated this way, and the problem is I have not heard much news on this. So to do my part, I illustrated this poster to showcase how Asians are being faced with this problem, and it should be stopped. I wanted to make a piece about how Native Americans are facing many issues today. One of the many problems they are facing are the way they are pictured. A lot of people think of Native Americans as mascots or costumes when it comes to dressing up, but people who do this need to realize that it is disrespectful to them and to their culture. Just like many other cultures, I want to shed some light, because this isn't talked about enough. I created this piece as another depiction of what I have been seeing these past years. We can't lie to ourselves and say that America was great because if it was, this wouldn't keep happening. I decided to make a collage of mixed media to include many aspects of the protest. I'm Jennifer Rojas and I'll be showing you my photographs. Antonella Olivia. This first photograph is my niece Antonella Olivia. The muse to my all, my happiness, and my inspiration. Antonella Olivia was taken by a simple shot from an iPhone a few summers ago. One day, I was experimenting with the contrast of light and dark and was able to capture one of my best first photographs. This picture really stood out to me as I was able to capture such a meaningful and depth photo. Bella. My next photograph is a shot of my friend Bella in downtown Jersey City. My main focus was to be able to create a lively and euphoric photo. I also wanted to let the model and background share its own beauty individually but also forming into one. This by far has been one of my favorite photos as it really brings out the rare beauty from the model. Brillo. This shot was taking place in the waterfront. It is beyond beautiful and breathtaking to me. The model looks so powerful with the light from the background right behind her. Such a delicate pose, but with the strong lighting intertwined into a magnificent photo. There was no focus to this photo, but it does scream to me woman empowerment. Jay-Z. This photo was also taking place in downtown Jersey City. This model is my friend Rupanjay Singh, and we stopped by a heavily mural area to take the shot. However, this mural was inside a place, so you can see how the glass made the mural look real and remarkable, although there was some glare. I really liked the way the colors went well together with the strong red and the subtle shades of blue. Sue. This photograph is of an old friend named Sue. My approach on this photo was fashion photography, as I was focusing on the fashion and pose from the model. I wanted a photo that would be found from a fashion magazine, like Vogue. The color scheme goes very well together from her outfit and the building. I feel like I accomplished my approach. Shoreline. In this photo is my dog Kona running through the shore. This photo was meant to be focused, but due to an accident, I accidentally shot this blurry. Although this was by accident, I really liked the way it came out as you can still see and feel the photo. I can feel my dog excitement and can see the waves ascending to the sand and rocks. Vanessa. This shot was taking place in St. Peter's University during class. Once again, I was exploring the contrast of dark and light and was able to create a photo of a physical reputation of it. I took the shot behind the scenes of my professor taking a photograph of my fellow classmate. It seems like my professor is pointing at her, but in reality, he was just taking a photograph of her. Although this was just for fun, I really admired the way it turned out as it gives a real feeling of her vulnerability.
Hi everyone, my name is Athena Serrano and I am a student double major in graphic arts and communication and media. I am an illustrator and a graphic designer and in this Rebels Revolution Senior Thesis Exhibition I am here to present my illustrations. This first piece is named Sweet Strawberry. This illustration is actually a remake of an old drawing I did in high school as briefly shown here. But as I was sketching the current Sweet Strawberry, I took heavy inspiration from both my favorite cartoon character, Strawberry Shortcake from my childhood, and Lolita Fashion, a Japanese subculture in street fashion inspired from historical Victorian and Rococo fashion in Europe. And despite its name, it has nothing to do with the infamous Vladimir Nabokov novel Lolita. Rather, the fashion is meant to be an expression of hyperfemininity and rebellion against conformity. As a girly woman who loves cute culture and history, I was especially drawn to Lolita fashion, and I actually wear it occasionally. And drawing Lolita fashion brings a sense of therapeutic joy for me, the same way as wearing the fashion does too. Overall, I see fashion as an artistic form of expression. This second piece is named Victorian Gothic. Victorian Gothic is actually another remake of an illustration I made for Halloween 2018, and it takes inspiration from both history and Gothic literature. Gothic literature has its origins from 20th century Europe, and it was especially popularized during the reign of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. The genre itself has elements of horror, death, and romance. The dress the woman dons is loosely based on Queen Victoria's wedding gown and early Victorian fashion. This third piece is named Filipino-American. America is not merely a land or an institution. America is in the hearts of men that died for freedom. It is also in the eyes of men that are building a new world. These are the words written by Filipino-American writer Carlos Bulosan in his novel America is in the Heart, which is a semi-autobiography based on his real-life experiences of racism, hardships, and struggles immigrating to the U.S. in the 1930s and 1940s. I didn't fully conceptualize how brutal the American colonization of the Philippines was until I read the novel in 2018. This was around a period I started gaining interest in my Filipino heritage, as I am a second-generation Filipino-American born and raised in the United States. I illustrated this piece for my 2019 article in the St. Peter's Tribune newspaper, Filipino Americans, a minority within a minority, which I discussed about how Filipino Americans, despite being the second largest Asian American population, are often ignored or overlooked within American history, statistics, and media representation and discussions about Asian Americans. This piece is meant to represent the dual prideful identity many Filipino Americans possess. This fourth piece is named Filipiniana. Filipiniana is an umbrella term for traditional dresses and ensembles, usually worn by women, in the Philippines. Other terms used for Filipino traditional ensembles include the Maria Clara gown, Tarno, Traje de Nestiza, and Barot Saya. It is important to note each term is used for a specific style and design of Filipiniana, although the terms may sometimes be used interchangeably. In this digital painting, a Filipino woman is donning a Traje de Nestiza, which consists of a camisa, blouse, a saya, a long skirt, and a pañuelo, a shawl draped around the shoulders. A fan is often equipped by wearers due to the tropical climate and sometimes to flirt with potential suitors. Filipiniana has indigenous origins, but it has been evolved and modified over the centuries to combine both native, Spanish, and even sometimes American elements due to the Philippines once being a colony of Spain from 1565 to 1898 and a colony of the United States from 1902 to 1946. For this piece's painting style, I took inspiration from the painting La Bulaqueña by 19th century Filipino painter Juan Luna. This fifth piece is named Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink is another portrait illustration that depicts a Filipino woman wearing a Filipiniana dress. The title choice for the piece emerged after thinking of the film of the same name. At first, when I started drawing Pretty in Pink, I wasn't going to make her wear pink, but since I liked the color, I decided to give her that. 
It fit perfectly because the woman in the portrait has dark skin, which is not considered the Philippines' traditional beauty standard. Overall, the portrait can give a message that just because a woman does not have fair skin does not mean she is not pretty or beautiful. This very last piece is called Hate is a Virus. This last piece is one of my more recent illustrations created to bring awareness on the alarming rise of violent anti-Asian hate crimes towards Americans of East Asian and Southeast Asian descent during the COVID-19 pandemic. I created this for my St. Peter's Tribune article, Enough is Enough, Stop Downplaying Racism Towards Asian Americans. I can't say that I'm surprised about the rising number of violent and aggressive attacks because racism against Asian Americans has a long history dating back to the 19th century. And even after the 9-11 attacks, South Asians and West Asians, or people of Arab or Middle Eastern descent, have been targeted with suspicion, harassment, and violence. But because Asian Americans are deemed as the, quote, model minority, our experiences of racism is often dismissed in the modern day. The current wave and movement of being anti-racist is really important to us. We don't want to see any more hate and violence. We are tired of being gaslit and not being listened to. We are angry it has taken this long to be given the opportunity to be heard. And what infuriates me more is how it wasn't until the, the violent attacks or even the Atlanta shooting that it, for people to even notice that racism towards Asian Americans is a serious problem. 2020 and 2021 should not be just temporary periods during which we decide to fleetingly unite and fight racism and bigotry. And we are angry it has taken this long to be given the opportunity to be heard. This takes continuous effort through generations.